Welcome back to the GTN show. This week we have actual racing with WTS Hamburg slash the ITU World Champs, Helvellyn Triathlon and many more. We're also going to be talking about the new Zwift Triathlon Academy, Jan Fredeno on the mend and we'll be taking a look through some of your photos and videos that you've been sending in to us. So this weekend we had a ton of actual racing. So much so we have decided to flip the show on its head today and start with the race news. So first up we had WTS Hamburg which has caused a fair bit of controversy to say at the very least because just two weeks prior to the event the ITU announced that it was going to be the World Championships. That caused a number of issues for the athletes because suddenly they had to prepare for a World Championships within the space of a couple of weeks. And then also we had the fact that some athletes simply couldn't get there due to COVID-19. We had a number of athletes being quite outspoken about this, including previous World Champions. But regardless of it being a World Championships or not, we had some very, very exciting racing. In the men's race, we had Alistair Brownlee, Jonas Schomburg and Vincent Louis really driving the pace early on in that swim to try and break that field up over the 750 metres. Alistair Brownlee continued to drive that pace onto the bike and try and split that field up further. He was soon joined by his brother, Vincent Louis, Connacht and a number of others. They had a gap of around 18 seconds going out of T1 to a larger chase group on the bike. That opened up to around 21 seconds part way through the bike and then closed down to around 15 seconds going into T2. Very early on though, going out of T2, it was clear that the podium positions were going to be sewn up between Vincent Louis, Berger and Valasha. And with 350 metres ago, Vincent Louis managed to open up a bit of daylight between the trio. He went on to take the win, Valasha took second and then Berger took third. Meanwhile, in the women's race, Jess Learmonth and Cassandra Bogrand were also driving the pace in that swim to try and break the field up. They led into T1, but were joined by a few others as they exited the likes of Taylor Spivey. Duffy and Zephyrus didn't quite make that front group, so they were driving the chase pack to try and catch Jess Learmonth and the others, which they managed to do, and all the main players were together coming into T2. Onto the run and Duffy and Learmonth were very quickly to the front. They were joined very quickly also by Georgia Taylor-Brown who pretty much went straight through them. After about a kilometer, she had the lead and went on to take the win. Duffy had to settle for second. Then Laura Lindemann actually managed to catch back up to take third place. So congratulations to Von Saint Louis and Georgia Taylor-Brown. They are officially the 2020 world champions. No one is taking away their incredible performances and achievements, but I'm sure there's going to be a few disgruntled athletes out there. Meanwhile, over in Prakatisa, we had Xterra Czech. In the men's race, it was Maxim Shane that was first out of the water and off the bike. He had around a 1 minute 20 gap back to the next competitor, around 2 minutes 40 to Arthur Serreras. But Arthur Serreras posted the fastest run split of the day to catch Maxim Shane and take the overall win. 37 seconds back, Maxim Shane was in second. And then the big surprise of the day was third place finish, who was Sebastian Carabin. I had to read that out because we've not come across him before, but it was a big surprise because he was 85th out of the water. He's relatively new to triathlon and swimming, obviously but posted the fastest bike split of the day, came off the bike in around fifth place and then managed to run his way up into third. So very impressive, keep an eye out for that name. In the women's race, it was a wire-to-wire -wire win from Laura Phillip, who actually won Exterra France back in 2017. And obviously this year has decided to step away from long distance racing at least momentarily with everything that's going on and enjoy a little bit of off-roading. Second place went to Sarah Mehoffer and third to Marta Mendito. Now we really did have a ton of racing this weekend because we had three 70.3 pro races. So I'm actually just gonna list off the winners of these races, otherwise we'll be here forever. So I'm at 70.3 Talon, that was won by Daniel Backard, just ahead of Sebastian Keenley. In the women's, it was Katrina Matthews, a very impressive performance there. Then we had Ironman 70.3 Le Sable de Lon. That was won by Rudy Von Berg on the men's side and then Justine Matthew on the women's side. And then finally, Ironman 70.3 Dinia. And that was won by Magnus Ditley on the men's side with Patrick Lang actually back in third. And the women's was won by Lisa Norden. Oh, and we can't forget the Helvellyn Triathlon, mostly because Heather and myself got stuck in and experienced the brutality of the event our very selves. The Helvellyn Triathlon is 
a relatively small event here in the UK, but uniquely this year has managed to attract some of the top pros in the UK and a whopping prize purse of $15,000 donated by the PTO. Now, the Hellvolant Triathlon is one that I've known about for years, been quite intrigued by because it's pretty mental. It's got quite a name for itself. It's almost Norseman-like, just a little bit shorter. The swim is typically quite cold. The bike course is very hilly, even if it is just shy of 60 kilometers. And then the run is straight up Helvellyn Mountain and straight down. It's what we call here in the UK a fell run. And it has borderline rock climbing in the middle and then very loose rocks on the way down. Now, as I said, Heather and myself took part in the race. We have a video to come, which should be very, very good. So stay tuned for that over the next couple of weeks. Aside from us racing though, we had some pretty big pro names. We had Alistair Brownlee and Joe Skipper taking part. As I mentioned already, Alistair was actually racing on the Saturday in Hamburg, WTS Hamburg, the World Championships. He then managed to fly his way home and get to Helvellyn to race on the Sunday, getting into the Lake District at around 1.30 a.m. in the morning. But I mean, if anyone could do it, Alistair can, and he really did. He went on to take the win and set a new course record, which he actually did hold back in around 2007. And then we had a pretty tough battle between George Goodwin and Jack Willis. George Goodwin managed to pip Jack by literally two seconds, I think it was. Jack took third. They did also include a gender neutralized format whereby the women actually started 28 minutes and three seconds before the men, and then essentially the men would chase them down. And then the prize purse went to whoever came within that top 10. So the first woman across the line was Nikki Bartlett. She crossed the line in fifth overall. So well and truly got some prize money there. Ruth Hustle was next and she was eighth overall. And then India Lee slipping just outside the top 10, finishing in 12th. Well, that was a lot of race news. It's great to see so much exciting action happening. So we're going to keep trying news nice and brief this week. We're starting off with some more news from the PTO. Now, they're actually going to be supporting the Canadian National Championships, which are going to be held this weekend, coming on the 13th of September in Ontario. And this is a slightly different event. It's a non-drafting Olympic distance triathlon. So it's attracting both ITU professionals and long distance professionals who are all going to be racing together. So the swim is actually going to be completely separate so it'll be a time trial event in the pool and then once they've got their swim times the athletes will be ranked in order so the fastest swimmer will be going off first according to that lead they had for the bike and the run so basically the first one across the line will still be the winner Moving on, some exciting news. The Zwift Triathlon Academy is back again. The enrollment opened just yesterday. If you want to get involved, you can just head along to zwift.com forward slash academy. And you might remember we've covered bits of the Zwift Triathlon Academy in the past, but you've got options. You've got the Zwift Tri Academy, you've got the Zwift Men's Road, the Zwift Women's Road, and there's a new one this year. We have the Zwift Run. If you want, you can enter all of them because there's some great sessions in there. For the Zwift Triathlon Academy, there's going to be five bike workouts and five run workouts which are being designed by Dr Dan Plews and then at the end of all of that there's a time trial for the bike of either 20 or 40k your choice and the same for the run you've got the option of either a 5k or a 10k. And obviously this is open to everybody. There's some great workouts in there, but if you're interested in performing at a high level in those races and think you've got a good shot, you could be in the chance of becoming one of these Zwift Triathlon Academy team members. And that comes with quite a lot of perks. You get kitted out like a pro, you get coached, you get mentorship from the likes of Tim Don and Sarah True. And then as long as you qualify, you get taken out to the World Championships in Kona to race as a team. So the key dates are the enrollment is now open but the actual registration for the in-game for the Tri Academy opens on the 28th of September and then the Academy will run from the 29th of October till the 23rd of December and that's when you have to complete all of those workouts so pop it in your diary. And now a little bit of running news for you. A couple of new world records from the Diamond League track meeting in Brussels last Friday. And it was the unique event of the one hour race that was a target for both the men's and the women's records. And it's fair to say both were completely smashed. The men's record was targeted by Great Britain's Mo Farah, along with his training partner, Bashir Abdi. They were both looking on track at the halfway point and they were aided by having the, um, the marker on the track, the light showing highly gravitational 
Selassie's previous record time. So that was set back in 2007, a distance of 21 kilometers, 285 meters. And it looked at around the 20K mark that the athletes were slightly off the pace here, but it was Bashir who led for a little bit to bring them back onto pace. And then Mo Farah with his really famous now strong kick for that last leg, got him the win, but most importantly, got him the record. So he covered a distance of 2001, sorry, 21 kilometers, 330 meters to break the record by 45 meters. So very impressive there. On the women's side, the record was broken by an even larger margin. It was Diatune's record of one of 18 kilometers, 517 meters. It was sat in 2008. But Sifan Hassan of the Netherlands broke the women's record, covering a distance of 18 kilometers, 930 meters. So two very, very unique, but still very impressive world records and some incredibly fast running. So it's going to be exciting to see if we see some more fast half marathon and marathon times as we go into the autumn kind of race season for that. And sticking with running on a much smaller scale, I must admit it's only news for England at the moment, but Park Run, the free 5K weekly event that's held, um, that's open to everybody, was put on hold due to COVID back in March and delighted to hear just recently that it's going to be back on the cards in October, obviously running under different restrictions, but still it will be open for all to get back running. So no excuse for anyone who lives in England. And our final piece of try news comes from some Instagram stalking. Now, a few weeks ago, you might have noticed that Dianne Fredino had a bit of a tumble on the bike and was injured, but he kind of played it down as maybe it was just a bit of, you know, some bruises and scratches. But sadly, it does seem like it's a little bit worse than that. He's broken some ribs and hurt some muscles and ligaments. So that is the end of his 2020 season, in his words, before it even began, which is obviously a shame. We wish Jan well very soon. But if you look at his Instagram post, life isn't too bad at the moment for the world champion. It's that time when we look at your photos and share them. We've got a few videos this week as well, but starting us off is a fellow excited competitor. It's John who sent a picture of his Cervelo P3 from Winchester. And he says, at last, a race, not a virtual one, but a real one. Yes, John, I know how you feel. I um, hope you loved it like we did. Uh, next, we have a video here from Daniel. Um, he says, after training for a year, I'm on 70.3, Savenia was postponed due to COVID. Yeah, we're used to that, aren't we? But the wasn't going to stop me. My amazing family made my race happen anyway. They got up early, cheered, helped me with transitions and brought very needed replenishments to avoid dehydration. It was awesome and definitely a better first triathlon than I could have ever asked for. Um, Daniel, that is awesome and good effort on putting together a little video for us and thanks for sharing it. And uh, now we have Gerhard on his, well, there's a picture of his Boardman CX and he's got a Team TT bike as well. Um, it says, training mostly for duathlons. I'm hoping to make the GB age group team in the next couple of years when we're back to racing again. Can't wait. Well, Gerhard, good luck for that. Hopefully you make the GB team. And our final video from this selection this week is from Devendra in Pune, Maharashtra in India and says, I was training for Ironman Tallinn. Similar story here. Suppose to be in Estonia this weekend but couldn't get there basically due to Covid um, and really wanted this distance off my back so I decided to do it solo under the Ironman rules and regulations on Saturday the 29th of August very specific with the date and finishing in an overall time of 12 hours 40 minutes including transitions now with no external support and no race setup I think that's incredible I mean doing an Ironman full stop is impressive but doing it on your own even more so so congratulations to that and what a wonderful selection this week so if you've been inspired by these photos or videos that you've seen please share anything that you're up to and we might be able to share that next week you can do that on the gtn uploader which is on screen now it's still me for the final part of the show it's caption competition we had this picture of johnny brownlee last week starting or diving into the pool at super league and we're keeping it nice and succinct this week with three captions two runners up first one savage poet oh no 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 not the belly flop Fergal Akala, I believe I can dive, I believe I can touch the sky. Yeah, that's a song. Was it R. Kelly? I think you guys probably know it. I'm not singing it. No, we've been there before. Um, but the winner this week of the GTN cap is Zhao Zhao Hadler. I thought my contract guaranteed a stunt double. Well, well done. Do get in touch and we'll get a GTN cap out to you. And we're sticking with the brownie theme, it seems, this week, because this picture is a very different setting and it's a different brownie. It is Alistair Brownlee running up Hal Velen. He's making it look easy, isn't he? 
If only it was that easy to run up that mountain. In actual fact, at that point, I was most certainly walking. But anyway, I digress. You guys know what to do, so please leave your captions in that comment section below. And before we finish up, there's a couple of videos I want to tell you guys about. In particular, a swim run adventure that Mark and I got up to when we were up in Helvellyn in the Lake District. There's going to be some stunning views and some quite fun clips, I hope. It was a pretty epic adventure and um, yeah, I can't wait to see it myself. So keep an eye out for that one. It should be coming out on the weekend. We've also got how to boost your power on the bike. And finally, you might have noticed last week we talked about these lovely new t-shirts in the GTN shop. Well, some exciting news. We have some more new t-shirts, this time in the running variety. So to add to our black t-shirts, we've got a blue one and a white one in both men's and women's. And in actual fact, mine have just arrived. I haven't taken them out of the packet yet, so I'm quite exciting. I'm excited to try those and you can find them on the GTN shop now. So I'd recommend heading over there. Before you go, you can give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the globe to subscribe and a couple of videos that you might like to take a look at if you haven't already seen there's a GTN so us versus GCN a race on Zwift that's on screen now as well as why you should breathe bilaterally